have you ever felt so congested that the idea of giving a speech or speaking up in a meeting just didn't feel right? Well, that's how I've been feeling for the last couple of weeks. And that's why I haven't been here on YouTube. But I'm here today because I know I owe you a video. And funnily enough, today, I'm going to talk to you about the voice. Even though my voice is not at its best. Because sometimes we need to push through. And the question is, how can I use my voice in a sustainable way where I can have a 10-minute presentation, where I can coach you for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, or where I can simply speak up in a meeting? It's challenging, but we can do it. And you know, we've talked recently in recent videos here on YouTube about relaxation of this part of the body, of good posture so that when you're sitting well, you're breathing well, right? So I'm reminding myself of these things as I speak to you because one, I am running out of breath. If you don't know, I've had COVID for couple of months. And so, you know, I know that in order to speak to you, I need to have good posture. I need to make sure I'm breathing well, not just the inhale, but the exhale. And then I'm talking to talk to you today about the, the voice, right? I want my voice to be as strong as possible. So I can get through this video. So the voice, right? We have our vocal cords right here. It's, it's in the neck. So this whole area has to be relaxed. The breath has to come in. And then let's talk a little bit. Let's start with the different elements of the voice, starting with resonance. So our bodies, that's the cavities, the body itself, creates a kind of vibration. And we get that resonance or vibration in the chest down here. It can get stuck here, which is where it is for me right now. It can also get into the nose, right? And some languages themselves are nasal, right? You can hear the sound of the voice going through the nose right? Because this is a cavity. So you're going to get vibration. And then also, we have kind of a vibration that can happen a little higher. And that's also kind of in our head voice, where we're not necessarily changing the intonation, but we are using a vibration or resonance from the higher parts of the head. So that's resonance. And there are other videos here on YouTube that, and I'll write that down to put that into the description. If you want to see about resonance, I'll share that link, okay? In the description of today's video. So resonance. Now, also, when we talk about the color or the expression of our voice, different emotions get different pitch. So if I'm excited or I'm nervous, I'm more apt to have a higher sound in my voice. If somebody is crossing the road and a car is coming, my voice is going to go high. Hey, Watch out, right? My voice is going to go high. But if I'm serious, if I'm angry, if I'm frustrated, if I'm confused, if I'm sad, right? My voice might go lower. So emotions, 
expression in that way, they have tone, different pitches. Now, pitch itself, intonation, one of the most watched videos here on YouTube, I'll put the link to that also in the, in the description, right? Intonation, the actual pitch or intonation of our voice, we can think about what are the sentence types. If you're making a statement, if you're asking a question, is it an open-ended question? Is it a closed question? Different types of questions get different pitch patterns. But most importantly, what I want to say is something that's a little kind of on the fence today, generationally speaking. And that has to do with something called upspeak. When we make statements in the diamond method, I teach you that it is essential that you bring the pitch down at the end of your statements. And we also bring the pitch down at the end of our thought jumps. Why? Because it's my opinion and several many voice coaches opinion that when we speak in order to sound like an expert or an authority to sound like we're making a suggestion we're giving advice we want someone to follow our direction we need the pitch to come down because if our voice goes up at the end of each thought chunk, it sounds like a question. Can you hear that? And I said it's a, a little controversial because generationally speaking, I would say if you're 20 years old, if you're 30 years old, and maybe even in your early 40s, you may have learned from pop culture that you want to bring the pitch up. It's a California phenomena, but it's also a generational pop culture of bringing the pitch up. So I want you you decide what works for you. What circles do you walk in? Who are you speaking with? I can guarantee you if you're going to speak to somebody who's in their 50s or 60s and you want to influence, you want to impact, make sure you learn about that up and down pitch pattern. But also, I want you to start to listen to influencers just to see when are they bringing their pitch down so that you can start to understand what influences today okay but also always think about the generation you're speaking with i'm always going to teach you that an up and then a downward pitch on statements is going to be what drives the message that's what what i learned okay all right so we've talked about resonance we've talked about expression we've talked about We've talked about intonation, right? There's also, when we talk about speech, we talk about the voice, we have to talk about diction. And that is the clarity of sound, making sure that you are articulating clearly, that you're moving the muscles in your cheeks, your lips, your tongue, you're using your jaw. And most importantly, that you're getting the vowel sounds accurate on stressed syllables. Now, there are other elements of the voice that you want to explore here on this channel. But most importantly, what I want you to keep in mind when you think about the diamond method is the diamond method, I would say more than 50% of what it represents 
is the voice. So if you're looking for vocal presence, if you're looking for a coach who's going to not just tell you how to organize your message, uh, use good eye contact, but who's really going to help you, and hopefully you hear that my voice, the longer I spoke today, even though, going back to what I said when I started, even though I have a vocal problem, my breath is not as strong, and I'm not feeling 100%, but my voice got stronger. And it got stronger because I used my breath, and I made sure that that breath was in my diaphragm and that my vocal cords were getting enough support from my diaphragm. Okay, that matters. So when you use your voice, it doesn't get tired. It doesn't sound like this if it doesn't have to. Now, I hope that you still learned something today. I hope that you learned something today. I want you to like, share, subscribe to the By Jill Diamond channel with notifications and come back because Starting next week, I'm going to have a three-part series that goes into the last three principles of the Diamond Method. So come on back. Remember to share this video with all your friends. And thank you so much for being here today. Have a great one. Bye.